Sup, 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 my name is Ruby for the Uyghur Council. It's really late, but holy shit, Konami, just when I thought I couldn't love you, OCG Konami, just so we're clear, I couldn't love you anymore, you go and give me this. We have two more Red Eyes cards and a Toon card. Toons are getting some damn love. Can you hear the excitement in my voice? So, Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon is the Red Eyes Black Dragon Exceed. It is themed for it, but it's also generic. I'm so fucking excited. This card with Exceed materials cannot be destroyed by effects. By card effects. That is ridiculous. So that means you could just spam out Dark Hole, you could spam out Torrental, and it will not be hurt. While this card has Exceed Materials, inflict 500 damage to your opponent each time your opponent activates a card or an effect. Goddamn. Once per turn, during either player's turn, you can detach one Exceed from this card, target one Red Eyes normal monster in your graveyard, and special summon it. That means you can spam Red Eyes so ridiculously hard to the point that Red Eyes may actually become Tier 1. Believe it or not, until we get Shadow and Prison Mirror. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. The next card that is towards the right of it, it's right in the middle, is Black Metal Dragon. And this is pretty much the Rider of the Dragon of the Winds, which we had in the Blue Eyes Structure deck. This is pretty much the same kind of thing. You can equip it to a Red Eyes. It's not a tuner, though. It's level 1. It's got 600 attack. I wish it was a tuner. Again, I wish it was a tuner. But the Red Eyes equipped with it is going to get 600 attack. And if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can add one Red Eyes from your deck to your hand so that allows you and it just has red eyes it doesn't you know it doesn't have to be the normal red eyes so that's that's pretty damn good now it equips to it so it's going to get 3000 but you can also equip it to the red eyes flare metal dragon and that you get some real power in there but i don't know i don't think it's really gonna be played but let's get into one of Ryu's favorite art types, which makes me so fucking giddy. There's going to be a Toon deck soon. <laughs> Toon Cyber Dragon. And just like you imagine it would be, you know, when you were a kid that you would design Toon cards. I know I designed a bunch of them, but Konami never took them. This is, if you control, uh, if your opponent controls a monster and you control no monsters, you could special this card from your hand. This card cannot attack during the turn, which is summon. That sucks. If you control Toon World... And the opponent does not control any Toon monsters. This card can attack directly. Now, this is only the first of the many Toon cards. And I actually like this because you can use it to tribute some of them Toon Dark Magician Girls and actually go off. I don't think it's that great yet. But we'll see where it goes. I mean, it's given me a lot of hope for the deck. I mean, you know, it just anything's possible with Toons right now. But there is more than that I have to give you. Ladies and gentlemen, Dark Magician of Chaos is getting an errata. It's pretty much the same thing. I, I'm sorry if I disappointed you. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, you can only use the effect of Dark Magician of Chaos once per turn. So that instantly means you can't spam it and get its effects. You can still spam it, but you can't get its effects if you spam it. During the end phase, end phase, if this card was normal summon or special summon this turn, you can target one spell card in your graveyard and add to your hand. So, when it's summoned, you don't directly get it. It has to be in the end phase, which means this card's much more balanced. At the end of damage calculations, if this card is uh, destroyed an opponent's monster by battle, banish that monster, and if this face out card would leave the field, banish it instead. A little bit of fine-tuning makes it a lot more balanced. Now, I have one more video I have to go film, so that way this and that can come out at the same time. I'm ready for the UQ account, so if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, slap that subscribe button if you haven't, because I upload all times in the day, depending on when content needs to come out. But anyway, let me know what you think about this in the comments below, and I will see you later. I'm ready for the UQ account, so I'm out of here. Peace. Correction, before I leave, we have three more cards I was too damn excited. These are the Ignites. They were, you know, you remember them? They were, they were pendulums? Yep. Well, there's more. There's a level 8 that basically you can target 3 Ignite cards you control and destroy them. And if you do, you can special this card from your hand. It's pretty nifty. Once per turn, you can target one other face up Ignite monster you control. Return it to the hand. If you do, you can put one monster your opponent controls on the bottom of their deck. That's pretty nasty. Then you have the Ignite Phoenix card, which is your field card. And each Ignite monster you control gains 300 attack and defense. Once a turn, you can target one Ignite card you control, destroy it. And if you do, you add, basically it's a Rota. It's it's kind of silly. With 300, 
my fraps got a little bit silly. So this is Ignite Burst, and once per turn during your main phase, you could choose up to three other Ignite cards you control and destroy them. Then return a number of cards the opponent controls up to the number of cards the opponent controls to the owner's hand. Why does that say that twice? I don't know. I'm going to leave a link so you can see that for yourself. Now, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one Ignite monster you could, uh, that is faced up on your uh, extra deck and add to your hand. I actually like that. It's not bad. But I'm just going to read that deck one last time and then I'm getting the hell out of here because I have another video to film and I'm sorry. I don't want to do that to you guys. So, opponent controls up to the number of cards. The, wait, opponent controls up to the number of cards the opponent controls. Oh, okay, it's a typo. Sorry, guys. But I just wanted to be accurate on that. I don't want to just, like, rush through and everything. But let me know what you guys think about this. And I'm out of here. Right before I went to go edit everything, there was even more stuff. My God. We have the first Pendulum Exceed. I don't even know how the hell that works, but we're going to find out. Holy crap. It is Ru-Odd Eyes Rebellion Dragon. Hyokuin Ryu Odd Eyes Rebellion Dragon. That's the full name. I believe I said that right for the first time. It's a scale of 4. It's a rank of 7. And it has 3,000 attack. Its penalty effect reads, once per turn, if you do not have a card in your uh, a card in your other pendulum zone, you can place one pendulum monster from your main deck in your pendulum zone. Holy crap, that's kind of broken. And summoning requirements are two level 7 dragon type monsters. Dragon rulers. If you Pendulum Summon level 7 monsters, you could Pendulum Summon this card face up from your extra deck. That's how it works. That's I guess that's how it's supposed to work. If this card is Exceed Summon by using the Exceed monster as Exceed material, destroy all level 7 or lower monsters your opponent controls. And if you do, inflict 1,000 damage to your opponent for each card destroyed. During this turn, this card can make two additional attacks during battle phase. If this card is destroyed by battle or effect in the monster zone, you can destroy all cards in the pendulum zone if you do place this card in your pendulum zone. So that's how that's going to work. You basically, I guess you bring it out by exceed summoning first, and then you can actually abuse the hell out of it. Now, this is um, so cool. Is so Koo no Maiji Sushi. Something along those lines. I probably butchered that last part, but I see the word sushi there. I'm highlighting. So it's a dark level 7 spellcaster with 2500 attack and 500 defense and a skill of 3. And you could, once per turn, you can target one exceed. You control. During this turn, that monster can be used as an exceed material for an exceed summon. That would use a level is the same as the rank of the monster. That's kind of nifty. Once well, turn during either player's turn, you can target one light monster in the field and negate that monster's effect until the end of the turn. I actually like this. I won't lie. I really do. It's pretty interesting. And then we have another one of the uh, Maiji Sushi. The Mate to Oh, okay. I'm missing the T. I'm butchering. So I'm just going to say Sojun No and then just leave it at that. But it's a scale of 8. So. Skill of three, skill of eight, you can get the fours and the seven, four to sevens. Once per turn, you can target one exceed you control, and one level five or higher monster you control until the end of the turn. The rank of that exceed monster becomes the same as level five or higher monster. If you control more cards than your opponent, the scale of this becomes four. Your opponent takes no battle damage. This is the monster effect now. Your opponent takes no battle damage from this card in revolving battle. And once per turn, you can target one other monster on the field until the end of the turn. The attack of this card becomes equal to that monster's attack. So basically, you can target the odd eyes, and this thing will go up to 3,000 attack, and that's pretty nifty. But anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. And as I said, subscribe if you're new. I could just when I thought I was going to finally end this part of the video, I'm so sorry. There's even more stuff. I know I keep saying, see you later. I don't mean it because the more stuff keeps coming out. Three new DDD cards. First is the fusion, and when this card's face up, card effects that would inflict damage to you, instead, you gain light points. And there's plenty of that that do this in the archetype, so it's extremely useful. The middle card is DDD Pandora, and when it's destroyed by battle or a card effect, and signs of the graveyard while you control no cards, you draw two. I don't know how useful that's actually going to pan out to be in the deck, but it's a thing. And there it is in the middle. And then you have the rank 5, which is also generic. And it can also be exceed summoning by overlaying it onto a rank 4 triple D, you know, DD, exceed monster you control as exceed material. And the first effect reads once per turn. When you were taking an effect that would inflict damage, you could detach one exceed from this card. You target one face up monster field, it loses 1,000 attack and defense, and if it does, the opponent takes 1,000 damage. Not bad. 
If this card is sent to the field to the graveyard, you can send one DD or Covenant card from your deck to the graveyard. I like it. Not bad. Let me know what you guys think. I don't mean to like just cut it off that quickly, but there you go. I'll see you later. Peace.